So my, today my topic is talking about transfusion medicine and uh, we're going to go through um, a few different things uh, in that kind of uh, topic because I think it's something that any one of us, regardless of whether you're in a specialty practice or not, can be involved in. And it's also a very important uh, practice of medicine that us as AHTs can also be involved in as well too, as long as you have the knowledge with it. So just to start off, uh, this is um, a little pug up in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, his name is Harley, and he actually now belongs with me. Um, he, probably about three years ago now, uh, was diagnosed with a portosystemic shunt, and one of the side effects of uh, a shunt is pica. And so he was going off to surgery, and coincidentally enough, a couple days before surgery, I had noticed that he pooped out an earplug after a visit to my parents' place. And so just in passing, I just mentioned to the surgeon, you know, can you please just look at his stomach while you're in there ligating the shunt? And so he opened up his stomach, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner there, and he had, I think it was, I believe, six earplugs in his stomach. And for a four-pound dog, it was quite a huge volume in his stomach. Consequently, afterwards, he did have some gastric hemorrhage, hemorrhage either as a result of the surgery um, or potentially because of the shunt, uh, they are more prone to gastric ulceration. And he wasn't doing as well as we would have expected uh, post-shunt surgery and required a transfusion, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner there. And fortunately, his uh, life-saving donor was another one of our staff members' dog, our three-legged uh, German short hair pointer, Gretchen. I don't know if you can see that she's missing a forelimb there, but she uh, contributed to saving his life that day. So. So some of the things that we're going to talk about, um, blood typing obviously, because it's uh, extremely important uh, when talking about transfusion medicine. Uh, some of the blood products that are available, and most of them you'll probably be aware of, but there's some products that we're starting to use more frequently in the last couple of years that you may not be familiar with. Uh, the importance of cross-matching, we'll talk about that. Uh, a little bit about administering blood products, um, just kind of some Again, briefly, just because it is such a huge topic to encompass in this conversation, we'll just kind of more do an overview. And then uh, what I think is quite important is transfusion reactions and how to monitor them. So just a quick definition, because uh, th it's important when you're looking at blood typing. So just a reminder that an antigen is a substance or a molecule that, when introduced into the body, can stimulate an immune response. Antibodies are proteins released in the body in response to that stimulation of an antigen. And so they're meant to identify those objects and neutralize them. Blood types, they are characterized by the antigen on the surface of the red blood cells in the body. Uh, they're very species specific. Uh, the immu immunogenicity and the clinical significance do vary depending on the type. Um, that's, uh, yeah, and just generally, there's a few different there's a few different methods of blood typing, but the general principle is that what they're looking for is a visible hemoglutination uh, reaction between patient red blood cell surface antigens and a known reagent antisera. So the few methods that you uh, are probably going to be most commonly uh, exposed to is obviously at your local veterinary lab. They obviously do blood typing. Uh, in-house blood typing cards are available. Is there anybody in here that uses in-house blood typing cards? So a few people. Uh, currently there are, um, sorry, so this is one of the most common ones that we'll see. Uh, we have the canine blood typing card for 1.1. And on the left, and for cats, it's type A, B, or AB, and those are currently the only uh, in-house typing uh, seras that are available. Another type of um, blood typing uh, test that's available, but I have not currently had any experience with, um, is the column agglutination test. And basically, it looks like kind of a four-column card and that you add your, your blood to, and Basically what happens is the blood goes through the gel and if, the rea if there's a reaction, the agglutinates stay in the gel. So that indicates a positive reaction and is identified as that specific blood type. Uh, there is currently only one company, as far as I know, that manufactures that. It's uh, Diamed out of Switzerland. And uh, the 
restriction of this type of uh, in-house testing is that you have to have a special centrifuge to be able to utilize that. Blood types. <laughs> there, in most of the readings that you have done and probably taught in school, there's an average of about six to seven blood types. And certainly over the years, they keep adding more. Uh, depending on what reference you read, there can be anywhere from listed of 10 to 12 or more. And to me, that just identifies that we still don't know exactly how many blood types there are in canines. Um, as mentioned, uh, blood typing is based on uh, the antigen on the red cell surface. So in dogs, we actually use what's called the DEA system, and this is an acronym for the dog erythrocyte antigen. Uh, out of those 12 plus uh, blood types, 1.1 uh, and 1.2 are probably the most clinically significant at this time that we're aware of. Uh, in dogs, you guys may have heard the uh, kind of phrase that, you know, a dog gets a one free transfusion without having to cross match or blood type. And the reason being is that dogs in general are not born with naturally occurring allo antibodies to other blood types. So what that means is that essentially you can give a dog a blood transfusion and they don't, they haven't already been born with antibodies to fight against those blood types. Um, so that's kind of important to think about in the future if you ever do have a dog that comes into uh, requiring a transfusion. We have probably all heard about the term universal uh, blood type, or you know, sorry, universal blood donor. And uh, in my readings, it's actually quite interesting because what I've learned is that there actually is no universal blood type, which is kind of contrary to what we've been taught. Uh, it's very debatable as to what is a universal blood donor. And the reason is because we still don't totally understand the significance of all of the different blood types right now. In general, it's probably more important to think about the different antigens that can cause the most uh, profound effect if utilized, you know, incorrectly. And that's where we look at 1.1 and 1.2. So in tradition, when we think about a universal donor, we think about 1.1 and 1.2 negative. You may have also heard that some... Uh, <coughs> It, you know, signify that this should be a four positive or seven negative, but 1.1 and 1.2 are kind of the most clinically significant antigens, and that's more important to think about than uh, using the term as a universal donor. So DE 1.1 is one of the most common blood types, and again, it's considered the most antigenic. So it's one of the most clinically significant, as mentioned. If a dog that is 1.1 negative is given blood from a donor that is 1.1 positive, it develops antibodies to that 1.1 blood type. And theoretically, in that first transfusion, it will be fine. But if that dog subsequently gets another transfusion of 1.1 positive blood, it will have an acute hemolytic reaction. And so that's, again, why we have to, it's important to know blood typing and try to stay away from the 1.1 positive bloods, especially if you don't know the type of your recipients. Uh, DE 1.2 is also another uh, blood type that um, animals can be sensitive if they are 1.2 negative and are administered 1.2 positive blood. This transfusion reaction tends to be less significant though. It's more of a delayed transfusion reaction and isn't quite as detrimental to the patients. Uh, but certainly it can be a concerning reaction to see. Uh, there's a list of other blood types there that uh, we ha that have been identified, uh, as you can read, 1.3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 11. Uh, 6, 8, and 11, there's not a lot of information known about these types, and uh, coincidentally as well, there's not any blood typing sera currently available for those types, so we can't actually type for them right now, but we know those are blood types from the past. There has been studies that show, have shown that there are allo antibodies, so antibodies in the body um, of the animals against DEA7 in about 15% of the dogs. So this is where um, they've kind of indicated that there are no naturally occurring allo antibodies. In this case, there is perhaps in about 15% of the dogs, but it's not a clinical significance, so it's not usually something that's highly considered when we're thinking about transfusing dogs. Has anyone heard of the canine DAL antigen? 
antigen. <laughs> Excuse me. And actually, neither had I until I did some reading in the last couple months. So DAL is a, a new antigen that was discovered in about 2007. And it was, it was named DAL because it was first discovered in a Dalmatian. Uh, they had tried to cross-match a, a Dalmatian with compatible blood types, but were coming up as an incompatible cross-match. And I guess it led to studies and identifying another antigen. And this antigen can be um, in any of the blood types. So it's independent of the DEA blood types. So it's on top of them. So they can have be DAL positive or DAL negative regardless of their blood type. There has been... There has been studies shown that, um, or there has been indications that there have been uh, incompatible transfusions involving this antigen. And so where this is important is um, for cross-matching. And uh, in the future, um, so not only are you looking at the blood type specific of your, your donor and your recipient, recipient sorry, um, but we also have to consider this new antigen called DAL. And yes, that was another thing as well too. So if you, for example, have a Dalmatian in the hospital that you need to cross match and you're having difficulties finding a compatible donor, then you may need to look within the breed itself and probably similar to some other breeds as well too. If you're having difficulties finding a compatible donor, it may be that you want to look within the breed itself because of the antigen DAL. In cats, I think most of us are pretty familiar with the, the common blood types of cats. Uh, we have type A, B, and AB. Cats, of course, differ from dogs as they normally do in most aspects of veterinary medicine. They like to be different. They do have naturally occurring alloantibodies. So they do have uh, an immune response to a foreign blood that would be introduced into their body. There is no universal feline blood donor uh, as a result of this. So feline blood type A is the most common blood type that we do see uh, overall in domestic short hair cats and long hair cats. Uh, I've listed off some breeds as well too that are most commonly uh, seen with blood type A's, although you know you just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, type A cats, they generally have weak, al weak anti-B allo antibodies. So essentially what that means is that if you were to take a type A cat and give it some type B blood, they will amount an immune response, um, but it's, it won't be like a massive acute transfusion reaction, but it will certainly uh, delay the life expectancy of those red cells that you're transfusing and the expected life, expe the ex <laughs> expected life expectancy of those red cells will be about two days, which isn't very beneficial if you're transfusing a cat to know that those red cells are only going to last a couple of days. And certainly it will have an effect on the cat. When we look at type B though, and uh, this is certainly a much more concerning situation, uh, type B cats have a very high number of alloantibodies against type A. If you were to transfuse a type B cat with even as much as a mill of blood, you could potentially kill that cat with that blood. Uh, they would have an acute hemolytic crisis. Type AB, um, I certainly have seen, although not as commonly. Uh, they're considered what we call a universal recipient. And what this means is that in the in case of them needing a transfusion, they could receive blood from a type A or a type B. But just from knowing what we know about type A and type B cats, it kind of makes sense in some ways. If you do have a choice in a, giving a cat a uh, transfusion that's AB, that you try to stick with type A blood, just knowing about the allo antibodies that you are going to pass on to this cat for future, uh, for future life. <laughs> 